Hello, it's the 21st of December 2017 and I thought I would do one last video diary for our British Muslim Values Research Project for um, the end of the year. Um, it's a pretty busy time in my academic year. I'm doing this on a break from marking student essays so I haven't really put a lot of thought or time into planning what I'm going to say. I've got this, which is a, a, a few notes of reflections and comments that I thought I might share for the record, but um, hopefully this makes some kind of um, um, sense. So where are we at with the project? We're, we're almost there, I think, in terms of collecting our what you could call data, although that's obviously a, a loaded and a, a problematic term. We've now run, depending on how exactly you, you count things, we've run around about 11 different focus groups with different numbers of participants from two up to nine in the largest. We have, I think, 13 different completed films, three of which I'm looking to pick up very early in January from one of our participant researchers. We've conducted a number of different interviews as well with people that have been involved in the project in different ways. And the hope is to supplement that data with some, some additional efforts early in the new year. We're still looking to organise another focus group or two if we possibly can. But I think we've got sufficient amounts of material with us now for the purposes of the project, which is obviously small scale, qualitative and, and, um, and not generalisable. It's really hard to say what exactly we have until we start going through the transcripts. Um, definitely in the context of the, the focus groups that we've been running, for example, it's clear that we've got a range of different perspectives on what British values means. And, and those perspectives already I'm beginning to think can be organised around different kinds of debates. On the one hand, there seem to be some people who use the term in a very descriptive way, that British values is simply what people value. That might be things we agree with or disagree with, but it's, it's an empirical observation on the other hand, oh, on the one hand. On the other hand, some people seem to use this term as in a much more normative way, that British values is something that refers to the things that British people should value, or people in Britain should value. And, and that leads to different kinds of discussions. We've had really interesting debates over whether or not British values change over time, and if they do change, is this progressive or regressive? Is it desirable that people in Britain either do or should value things differently than they might have done 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago, and so forth? People have discussed this term, British values, in a range of different contexts. Some of those we might expect, things like counter-radicalisation policy and prevent and so forth. Um, things like migration policy, education policy, multiculturalism, community cohesion, all these kinds of issue areas have been brought into this discussion by people within our focus groups and um, and indeed in our interviews and, and our films too. And we've been very explicit, I think, or very, we've been very keen not to shape the project around particular areas of public policy. Um, and so it will be interesting to look through exactly what we've got to see what kinds of areas of political life people reach to when they want to make sense of these big questions around British values and Islam. It's also, I think, just having not read through the transcripts of any of this material yet, but, but reflecting back on the research we've been doing, it's clear that people reach for a range of discursive resources too, to make sense of their opinions and their perspectives, their experiences within this issue area. So we've had lots of examples of people sharing personal experiences. So being asked questions about British values in job interviews, for example, or, or sitting through prevent training exercises at work or in college. People have shared slightly more distant memories with us, experiences of meeting British people for the first time or being invited to dinner at a, or not, in the particular case of one memory that springs to mind, at a British person's house and thinking about what that might mean in terms of ideas around things like hospitality or, or tolerance and so forth. Some people refer to books they've been reading or media they've consumed, whether fictional or, or factual. And in other cases, these discussions have progressed via, for want of a better phrase, some kind of abstract argument. So simply trying to reason through what British values might mean to debate, to disagree, to argue, to discuss these things and try to get to some kind of an understanding that way. So people have gone through different kinds of discursive um, exercises, I guess, or, or exercises in social imagination, if you will, to try and think through what exactly this term means to them. 
to, I guess, to, to come back to something that I've spoken about in previous videos, it's definitely clear that the project has seen a much higher rate of attrition than, than I've experienced in previous projects. One of the interesting things, and, and at the time, frustrating things that I've experienced has been having many, many conversations with people who were potentially interested in the project and potentially at least suggested they were interested in contributing to the research, but then um, disappeared or dropped out or, or no longer wanted to take part and one of the things I want to try and think about when it comes to writing up some of this material is to think through why exactly that might be is it because of a lack of trust is it because of a lack of knowledge about what the project is doing or, or who we are is it from having too much knowledge or too much experience of academics or issues around British values and so forth um, how exactly do we make sense of this and why is it been different in this particular project compared to other research I've done in the past on, on similarly sensitive areas such as counter-terrorism policy. But in a way all of these questions are, are <laughs> for the new year. It's the end of the academic term almost and I'm looking forward to letting these ideas percolate for a little bit at the back of my mind and, and coming back to them in the very early beginning of January. So the final thing I guess I should say though is to really thank everybody again who has contributed already to different stages of this project. So people that have organised focus groups for us, people that have contributed to those focus groups or, or given up their time to take part in individual interviews with us, those people that came along to our film screening. Of course our participant researchers have been making films on behalf of the project all manner of people that have helped us at the University of East Anglia in terms of running, organising and, and progressing this project. And of course, as with any research project, all those people around us personally that have spent probably far too long listening to our trials, tribulations, questions and um, problems to get to this point. So thank you to everyone that has taken part so far. I look forward to writing up some of these ideas and, and in a much more systematic and hopefully um, sensible way going forward. Um, enjoy the rest of the 2017 and I'll see you in the new year. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.